the greatest event in eSports history. And you know what? I think I might need some help with this one. So help me join together. Put your hands together for the LVPs. Ibai Yanos! Thank you, James Peterson. Muchas gracias, Das. Es un placer estar hoy contigo. Now we are here to introduce the 1v1 tournament, the pinnacle of competitive League of Legends. And out there on the Howling Abyss, it is just mano a mano. Empezamos el uno contra uno con un enfrentamiento histórico. Un hombre que ha destrozado muchas líneas, pero hoy solo tiene que destrozar una. Expeque. His opponent playing for Team Fire, North America's Dam Master General and CLG's Man with a Plan. Put your hands together for Afromu! <laughs> All right, gentlemen, let's lock and load and have a clean game. Hello, everybody. Crepo's still here, but I'm now joined by Deficio. Uh, a 1v1 expert, I'm Quite told. a downgrade. Uh, definitely not a 1v1 expert just yet, but after we watched a few games, maybe we both will be, because this is kind of the thing as a caster, when you look at the all-star schedule, you really want to cast. Yeah. And the players, they really want to win the 1v1 tournament. Players, progressively, as year and year goes by, get more serious about the yes. 1v1s. The first time is like, ah, you know, a little cheese here and there, <laughs> but these guys actually have been practicing to varying degrees of success. But they're definitely all talking about it. Yeah, and I, I walk by like all the player rooms, just kind of peeking in, seeing, you know, what are they practicing? What mode is it? It was 1v1 for like every single team. So we're gonna have like this very interesting meta in the 1v1 alone that might change a little bit during the games. Last year, obviously it started with some Lucian. Yep. He became like the, the best pick overall. Kennen was played a lot, Caitlyn as well. Some of the picks we will see here again. Yeah, and that's when we also saw teams kind of forgoing the 1v1 potential, shifting more to like, let's lace 200 CS in the yeah. most uncreative way possible. Oh, and Nasus AP was born, or Nasus <laughs> tank rather, with Emax. Yeah, we're gonna get a little bit of everything. Obviously, we have Xpeka, one side here from Origin still yeah. in the EULCS. And played mid lane here at All Stars, played a bit of AD carry here at Daisy. A bit of AD carry. A bit of AD carry. He's swapped around. Season. And a tire split, actually, yeah, as AD carry. But the 1v1 is still a thing where he should be really good with so many years of experience. But I actually think Aphromo as well, because he's so mechanically gifted, is very strong in this kind of game as well. Yeah, for a very long time, played mechanically uh, proficient champions. Last year, he couldn't show off. The analyst has touched on it. He was baited into a zillion 1v1, 100 CS, no items. It's kind of the equivalent of a uh, Final Destination Fox. But <laughs> I want to see Aphromo just whip out the AD carry and beat Xpeke in a 1v1 marksman yeah. duel. Give me Draven, you know. You just touch on the marksmen. We know they're really strong in this mode yep. here. Especially Caitlyn. He's like the perm band. Kennen as well being played as an AD carry. Super, super strong. S will be used quite a bit. Kalista was used in the wildcard tournament as well. So a lot of these AD carries are like some of the very strong picks. And look at that little setup. Yeah. We decided to tune our champion select just a little bit here. Time's ticking down. Three more seconds remaining for the first band. On the side of Peke, let's see what he gets rid of. Uh, nothing, it seems. Uh, either he forgot or they have agreed not to ban anything. Last year, two. we saw the teams ban out certain champions to spell out whatever it was going to be. Uh, there was, in the finals, it was a TSM ban both ways yeah. between, CLD, uh, between Double Lift Rotter and Bjergsen. This time, though, they're banning strong champions. Pantheon, really good at a All level in. 2 spike, all in. Yeah, uh, Syndra, obviously, one of the strongest one we want. Mages, LeBlanc is another one. Aurelian Soul in a one lane map really does not make a whole lot of sense. You can't really roam anywhere. Yeah, push and roam. Yeah, roam where are you relic. going? <laughs> where would you go? So that's a, that's a special one from Afro. Maybe he's been scouting uh, Pekka's uh, match history because these players, as we said before, they've just been sitting and spamming 1v1s against each other. Has to be poor if you actually let the game end though. I guess, yeah, the 1v1s tend to actually finish because you can't pause out of them. So you can sure. actually scout on the match history, what they have been playing. Yeah, exactly. Rise coming in. LeBlanc is open for Peke. A pick he's obviously used quite a lot throughout his career, even though it is a bit changed right now. But come on, it's 80 carries we're mainly looking at. And that one counts as an 80 carry right now. <laughs> and the players can't see the screen, by the way. They can watch up because we decided to be a little bit more lenient with competitive integrity here. <laughs> the players are sitting in front of the screen. Oh! He's looking at Xpeke, he's like, okay, can we see the team on both sides? 
It's and the rematch from the Marksman mode we just had with the ultimate mind games because now both players can look up at the giant monitor that's in-house and see Teemo versus Teemo. And remember, they can also talk to each other. But they can right also now. change at the last second and then look up at your opponent, stare him in the eyes and say, I'm here Seven, to win. Six, five, it's going down. I mean, they might just do this. The rematch from that Marksman mode. Web peg one, no! Oh, Change oh, it! Oh, That's the Draven! We got the Draven from Afrobo. Yeah. An old special from him for sure. Back yeah. when he used to be an AD carry. He used to be a streamer initially, AD carry focused. Uh, played on a few teams, but then went into competitive switch to support Cannon here as the opposition. You really want to get that stun out as soon as you can. Oh, yeah. If you let Draven connect one, two, three axes, you're going to be suffering. So this is likely a matchup where Cannon wants to get to like level six. Put you all in. Well, or zone with stuns. I actually thought Kenan would be banned a lot in this. I mean, first game, you know, small yeah. sample size. I mean, he forgot uh, to ban. He, he definitely, I mean, that was Peggy who forgot to ban here, but Kenan really is one of the best because his auto attack trading is so good yep. as well. Getting a few stacks on them to get some extra damage in there. It's hard to trade with his Q skill shot as well. You have to dodge that one. So, Kenan, even before six, is just really good at trading with other AD carries. Yep. And that's why he's so good because he then also has all in later. Versus range matchups, it starts at level two. Because Kennen usually wants to start W, stack up the f uh, fourth or fifth shot, yeah. attack the enemy uh, laner rather, and then press W for the poke. However, it's very hard to do that versus ranged champions. So in a ranged matchup, we could usually see Kennen start with Q. Yeah. And then at level two, they have enough spells to chain a stun together very easily and take control of the lane. And that's really one of the important things here for, for Aphromoo to kind of play around because he can see the stacks at all yeah. times. He knows don't no take a trade if you're about to get stunned by a stack. And also level six, Watch out for that all-in for Pekka. There is exhaust on both sides. Yeah, if both. you're new to 1v1s and you don't see any flashes or snowballs, it's because they're very gimmicky. You do not want to run flashed in a 1v1. Combat summoners galore, you usually see exhaust ignite. And if you're maybe a mage, it could be exhaust, exhaust and barrier if you're playing for the minion game. Exactly. If you play for 100 CS because you're boring, you go barrier. If you actually want to go for the kills, you can take some more offensive summoners, ignite, exhaust in this case here. Yeah. The race for level two is important, just like in bot lane. It's the seven creep here. You can compare it to like a mid lane matchup. First wave Lane's drops, and then the first creep of the second wave is where you can level up, and then obviously go in for a good trade while you have an extra spell up versus your opponent. And what we see right here on your screen, guys, this is where Europe is the experts, because oh. they have been practicing these like uh, bush things, and then you face check, and you see who wins out. Pega might just uh, see if he can get a little bit of damage. Oh, spots him with the sweeper. And the push starts. Draven can actually push pretty hard level one. With the Axe Fan Pekka trying to catch up. As long as you're like keeping up, you should be able to get level two as well by the time he stepped forward to yep. kind of give you a hit. But yeah, Draven's love to get that level two, speed himself up, get a few extra auto attacks in. Yeah, we'll we'll trade both sides. One Axe versus one W proc. There's a CS behind, but honestly, I don't think this match will get to CS Max here. So just poke from XPK, but Aphromo is poised. One more Axe of that creep, and then the next melee creep that dies will make it so that Aphromo is level two. They can take down the last cast of minion next to that melee and just even it out. So both gonna get two. Yeah. No one gets any crazy all ins just yet. Aphromo might want to get all three spells first. But then we want the speed boost to follow yeah. up after you throw that E out. And that was actually not the best trade because you already had a stack on him stepping in and start trading and getting stunned by Pekka. And it's super, super even so far. But I think Aphromo kind of knows like level six for him. Using his ulti effectively in a big one-on-one -on -one is very difficult. You only get half of the damage by the time it returns. Besides the Afro going All in. in. Exhaust. See you trading back and forth. Afro is going down. He's down. Afro disrespecting the stun two times in a row. KO. He falls down. Peke, that's the cannon's dream. A few minions helping you on the side. Axe is coming very linear. You know where Draven's going. You do, and I mean, again, let's see the crowd. Fable. I'm pretty sure it's... Nah, you can't really say my name either here. <laughs> it's a bad name I picked. Yep. Luckily, not worse than Sifa, so... Yeah, we gotta get rid of that one. Peke, fan favorite, takes it home. Pose a kiss to the fans. Of course. Or to the casters. Casters. We are right in front of him, after all. Let's see it all in one more time. So Aphromoo has minions on him. He's gonna get exhausted, he gets stunned at the same time, he knows it's too. That's a trade you will never win because you can exhaust champion damage, but minion damage will be consistent. So three range creeps, a cannon and a melee creep on you, that is the equivalent of just a champion fighting back. I think Ephraim kind of knew. He okay, knew. I, I need to try something very early on. Getting to level six is super risky against the cannon. Yeah. And I think, I mean, we, we had the back timing. 
He did, true, very true. I mean, maybe he was trying to contest the relic as well that was just spawning right in front of them, but super risky all in for him, obviously backfired. Draven, though, against Kennen. I think it's a little bit of a mismatch. I think Kennen really is one of the absolute S tier picks you, in this uh, game mode here. Ideally, you need to find a way to weave your axes in the minion wave so you can step out of Kennen's Q poke at least, hit him in the face yeah. with come axes. The push is, is what generates you an advantage, pushing into the tower so the CS drops, get an ideal back with a maybe 10 creeps advantage, get an extra item, and then look for a good play. I think Aphromo was a little over eager here. Peke did well by this time, waited for minion assistance. <laughs> I felt like Peke is kind of sad back and he's okay. just kind of waiting back. Oh, you're going all in, fair enough. I'm going to take that trade, I'm going to stun you, I'm going to have the minions, and then just pick up a very, very easy kill. And still, what we always see in these 1v1s, you know, we look mm -hmm. at last year, we look at the 1v1s in the past, the meta develops a little bit over time because now they're sitting, a lot of players backstage. They're all watching this. They're all watching, they're all cheering, and they're all talking about, oh, oh, that cannon there, that looks pretty strong. Oh, Draven, ah, didn't really work too well. I think they knew cannon was pretty strong. Apparently, Ephraimu didn't, or he got tricked by the Teemo. Yeah, like, all oh, the folks was on the Teemo. It was honestly yeah. just uh, a bait. The elaborate ruse sprung up by Xpeke. He took it home in the end. Good, because we need the points on Team Ice. Actually, Team Ice is ahead right now. Yeah, but I, <laughs> I guess they need more points. Mark market projections <laughs> indicate that Team Ice may lose a couple of 5v5 games if they play <laughs> such a shitty European team like they did this morning. Now, the next one, Crepo, is also going to be very, very exciting, where we have some top laners going against each other. This one was like a mid laner slash AD carry.